in the last century, the Young Men's Christian Organization was organized to meet the needs of men. Today, the YMCA, having grown and changed, meets the needs of family here in the Austin area and around the world. On Austin Faith Dialogue today, we talk with representatives of the YMCA. Stay with us. Austin Faith Dialogue, at the crossroads of religion and life. A series highlighting the cultural and social interactions between the worshiping and religious communities in and around the capital city. Austin Faith Dialogue is brought to you by the Austin Metropolitan Ministries in cooperation with KXAN. Join us now in Austin Faith Dialogue. We're glad you've joined us today on Austin Faith Dialogue for our Father's Day show. I'm Sandy Wilder, your host, and today we're talking with representatives of the Young Men's Christian Organization, or these days known as the YMCA, to talk about the extensive program the organization has for men and for families. Let me make sure I get all the names and affiliations right. First, Paul Weber, you're the executive director of the North Park family branch, YMCA. That's important, the family, I know. That's right. Okay, and Tracy Warren, it says you're Federation Chief for the Y Indian Guides Program. Correct. Right. Okay, and Kit Dickey, you are the Sachem, also for the Y Indian Guides Program. Yes. Well, it's good to have all three of you. And I don't want to assume that people necessarily know much about the history of the why. So let's set the stage first. And I know, Paul, that you can talk a little bit about how the organization formed in the last century and, and what some of the needs were that it was trying to meet. Yeah, I can, Sandy. Thanks. About 150 years ago, the why got started in London, England. Um, it was the idea of one man who thought that he could... Uh, bring together a group of men that could come together and share each other, share feelings, um, have some spiritual support, some mental support, and eventually some physical exercise to try to stimulate everything all together. Uh, that, that whole project started in London and then slowly crossed over to the ocean into, into the Americas. Um, now the YMCA is worldwide. Here in the United States, though, I think most people think about the YMCA as a place where you just go and you exercise, but it's, more, it's much more than that. We have programs for children, uh, from swimming to, oh, to basketball to fitness classes for adults and even exercise for seniors. Um, the Y here in Austin got started back about 45 years ago. This is our 45th anniversary, and it actually started with YMCA programs. The facility didn't follow until 20 and most people always think of the facility first, but it's really programs first. That's a good sign that we were meeting needs before we thought about a building. I, I wonder in the history of the organization, what has been the significance of the fact that it was Young Men's Christian organization? Um, in what way do you suppose that influenced how the organization grew and developed? Mm -hmm. I think the YMCA, the, the original focus on Christianity was always picked up in different areas and different cultures. Uh, based on the needs of that community. Here in Austin, we keep a, our, Christ, our idea of a Christian emphasis is by focusing on character and character development skills that we try to present in our programs and in our, in our membership. Uh, so in different communities, it means different things. Some YMCAs are very Christian oriented and have things like you know, Bible, or, uh, you know, gospel aerobics and things like that and Bible study. Here in Austin, we have a little bit more central approach and try to focus it again on, on the character development angle. So then uh, we have never really excluded anyone, never. whether that person was Christian or not. Not at all. Yeah. Now, let's talk a little bit about one of the specific programs, and it sounds like one of the larger and more exciting ones, the, the Indian Guides program. Tracy, maybe you can say a little something about uh, the whole program, since you're a Federation chief, and I, I would understand that to mean as somebody pretty important in the program. Well, the, the program is, was originally uh, structured as a father-son program, and uh, now it's, it's grown to include father-daughter, father-son, mother-daughter, and mother-son. And uh, there's activities, there's uh, weekly, I mean monthly meetings typically, and a monthly uh, federation activity, which uh, would include campouts, uh, pine car racing, uh, Bowl, we do a bowl of fun and some other, some other activities. And, and you said federation. What's the significance of, of that term to describe the program? Sure. The, typically, the tribe would be structured with uh, 
seven to ten uh, families in a tribe and you'd have uh, several tribes in a nation and then four nations would make up the federation which would be the Austin basically the Austin area okay yeah. so then your volunteer responsibility covers a, a pretty wide area correct so maybe it's no accident then, Kit, you know something about the, the history of the program. Maybe it's no accident that it's called Indian Guides. Does that say something about how the program was, was started? It was started in Missouri in 1926. It's 70, was that eight years old? And uh, it was started by Harold Keltner, which he worked out of a YMCA and was a director. He had a good friend who was an Ojibwe Indian named Joe Friday. And they, the kids played Indian, and they wanted to start a group where the parents and children, fathers and sons, could get together and learn more about the outdoors and, and develop some relationship between the parent and child. Oh, right. Then, then using the model of the way Native American tribes are and, are, and yes. nations are structured. Okay. You have some material there, I, I think, uh, Tracy, that talks about the, the purpose, the aims of the Indian Guides program. Sure. The, the slogan is Pals Forever or Friends Always. Pals Forever is more typically for a father-son father group or friends always. The aims, uh, to be clean in body and pure in heart, to be pals forever, friends always with my father, mother, son, or daughter, to love the sacred circle of my family, to be attentive while others speak, that was always the favorite aim in our tribe when I was growing up, to be, be attentive while others speak. To love my neighbor as myself, to seek and preserve the beauty of the great spirit's work in forest, field, and stream. And that's, that's the, those are the aims. Pretty lofty ones. Now, at the, at the North Park branch, uh, Paul, is there an Indian Guides program based there? And if so, how, how does that program relate to everything else that, that your center does? Well. The YMCA of Austin has has spread out the tribes and in the um, in, in the Indian Guides programs throughout the city, so nothing is really based out of the branches. It's almost its own YMCA by itself. If you would uh, talk to some of the people, m many of them have never even been in the YMCA. Um, how does it impact, and what what do I see from the branch point of view? I see 75 and 80 year old men who have come into the Y, and they have they've had their children in the program years ago and when I mentioned the Indian guides or that when they see something up on a brochure and they see it you know a smile comes to their face a tear comes to their eye and you see a 70 year old gentleman um, maybe from Chicago originally remembers his Indian name and the times that he brought his child years ago and then you see other people that have grown up throughout that Indian guides programs that are now staff people or are board members or volunteers in our other programs so it, it builds a base, it builds a sense of family, it builds a sense of commitment in the community, and it's a great program. And I think the biggest thing is it builds a lot of great memories that mm -hmm. you can share with your parents. And now the program started out, as I understand, just with men and their children. So what do we know about when women began to be involved? How did that happen? I don't know exactly. I know it's, there are more women active in Austin because Austin is different it's more open whereas there are, are other programs around the United States that are still just father-son father-daughter what's it so, like for you then as, as a parent, female parent to participate in this kind of program it gives me a good chance to build some skills that my dad taught me about camping in the outdoors when I was growing up to pass those on to my son but it also gives me a good way to role model and show him what I want him to be like when he grows up. And do you have any daughters in the program? Or no, I have only one son. <laughs> Just one son, so he gets all the attention. And speaking of, of growing up in the program, I remember you're saying, Tracy, that, that you grew up in it. Say a little something about what your experience was like as a child participant and now as an adult participant. Well, it was, it was wonderful as a child. Our, we had a tribe that was uh, really very cohesive, uh, stayed together for many years, even after, after the, what you might say, the cutoff time to be an active member of the, of the Y in the program, the tribe stayed together as family friends and, you know, we're still, still that friendship still maintained to this day. And uh, fond memories of uh, 
campouts. I think every campout we went on, it rained, literally rained uh, for years. And we never canceled a campout as a child growing up, as a, you know, due to weather. But we got out there. And, uh, but there's some a lot of memories of uh, of what we would, you know, what we do on the. And, and how has your experience been now as an adult? Remembering what it was like as, as a child, what's it like for you now as an adult? Well, things have things have changed uh, somewhat in the in the way with the with the father daughter year, and a younger daughter. My daughter was a kindergartner when we started. Need a little more time. I mean, you you need to spend supervisory time with them more so. As I was a third grade third grader when I started, mm -hmm. so we were tend to sort of run wild a little run a little wilder than. And we can let the uh, kindergartners do. Hmm. But a good place to let off energy, it sounds yeah. like. And I wanted to to be sure to ask you, Kit. Your your title is sachem, and that's an unfamiliar word to me. Say a little something about what that means. A sachem is um, a long. It's a longtime member of Indian Guides. We've been in the program a little over six years. My son and I have, and it's also like counsel for the Federation Chief if he needs help. So. And now both of you are, are volunteers. I'm intrigued that you spend this much time in this program. What is it about Indian Guides that, that's been particularly attractive for you, Kit? Spending time with my son. And like I said earlier, being the role model and teaching him what I'd like for him to be able to do as far as volunteering and helping others as he grows up and learning about you know, going canoeing or going camping or learning something about trees or animals or something. And then remember it and he can use that in school and also use it in, in just general life. Right, and has some good memories of time with his mom. And, and then for you, Tracy, what, what's the attraction of spending your time with the Y and with Indian Guides? The, uh, just the opportunity to be, you know, to be together as a family. Some of the activities we do are our father daughter, and some are our family. Typically, the campouts, the entire family, at least with our tribe, the whole family will come, and uh, just the time together. And and that's not typical then. Uh, other wives around the state don't always invite the whole family. I I don't believe so. I think some are are strictly the tribe. You know, whoever goes on the campouts, whatever, however the tribe structure, whether it's father daughter or father son. Okay. It's, it's also good because it kind of creates, because you have tribe meetings and federation events, they are slotted at times, and there are also activities that you can do with your child alone. It creates the quality time that you need with the child, and it kind of like bumps you a little bit if you really work to there, realize that you need to spend time with your child. Quality time, exactly. There's a good phrase for any of us, particularly people of faith. We'll, we'll come back for some more conversation here in just a minute. Thank you all, and thank you for joining us for this first half of Austin Faith Dialogue. We'll be right back. glad you're still here with us on Austin Faith Dialogue. We've got this Father's Day show talking about the ministries of the YMCA, the Young Men's Christian Organization, and the things it now does for families here in the Austin area. We've got uh, Paul Weber, Tracy Warren, my cheat sheet so I can get all the names and first names.
James Wright and Kit Dickey. It's good to have all three of you. And we've just been talking about the Indian Guides program, um, some of the activities, but I wonder, Tracy, if you can say a little bit more about what happens throughout the year. What's the pattern of activities? Typically, once a month, the families will meet. The father-daughter in our, in our tribe, for instance, will meet uh, for, a, for a meeting. We'll have a, a chance for the girls to give a scattering, what we call a scattering report and a wampum report where they'll tell an activity that they've done over the last, you know, since the last meeting, and something they've done maybe to earn money and they put a little money in the kitty. Uh, then uh, we have a camp outs in September, October, November, uh, all its state parks. Mm -hmm. uh, December is the uh, Christmas arts and crafts that we volunteer to help sponsor for uh, the Partners of Youth program. Uh, Paul might can go into a little more detail about Partner of Youth. At uh, Christmas time, we gather children that we bring in. Most of those children come from, well, from, from, ho from households that have some financial difficulty. Our philosophy is that every child in Austin should have a great Christmas memory. Mm. Um, we bring them in. We, uh, we celebrate with games. Uh, they, they do arts and craft projects, which the Indian guides run. And we're not talking 100 children. We're talking... 500 children, mm -hmm. um, mainly predominantly from East Austin and from other community agencies like uh, Salvation Army and things like that. Uh, and then the children all get a, a Christmas gift, a uh, brand new wrapped Christmas gift. Some children, I, and it's hard for me to believe, wait until Christmas Day to open up that gift. For some of them, mm -hmm. it's the only gift they'll get. But I think the, the incredible thing that happens at that uh, gathering is you have the kids from the Indian guys, those children, and you have the children that we bring in, and a lot of wonderful things happen when you let mm -hmm. those children interact with each other and, um, w and watch those children um, see some caring volunteers um, who are the parents of the Indian guides uh, get involved and actually reach over and show them how to do arts and craft projects. And it, it's, it's really touching. It's, it's, it's one of the best Christmas gifts Austin ever has. And, and, the, and the Indian guys do a great job with it. I think one of the uh, policies the why is no child will be turned away on base because of financial mm -hmm. hardships. Need, financial mm -hmm. needs. Mm -hmm. That's good and, to know too. Uh, the Indian okay. guys helps, mm -hmm. uh, tries to help with that, you know, in a financial way also. Right. Uh, one of the things is the bowl of fun we do in, uh, in January. And then uh, we do, uh, we call it the mini Indy. It's a pie, it's similar to Pine Car racing in February uh, to not, don't want to schedule camp outs in the dead of winter months. It'll rain even worse. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, then come uh, March and April, we'll have more camp outs. And then it, in May, we do a sort of the end of the year uh, outing. We do it at a, the last few years we've done at a uh, day camp, like a summer camp facility. So it's not really camping. We're staying in cabins, but it's, uh, and then, the summertime, uh, we don't schedule anything until uh, late August. We do the picnic and paddle. It'll come up on uh, the 21st of August this year. It'll be our recruiting, mm -hmm. uh, what gives after school's been in session two or three weeks, and uh, a chance to recruit and have an open house at Silver Great. Park. Well, let's hope some of the folks watching are, are intrigued and they'll, yeah. they'll come out for that. And I want to get back to the finances in, in just a bit, finances of, of the Y in general. But first, I have to ask about the drum. <laughs> Kit, tell us about the significance of the drum that you brought, because I'm, I'm sure it relates to this whole schedule of activities somehow. Most tribes or the group of children of eight to ten children have a drum, and this one is decorated. Each child drew their own design to represent their, na their chosen you can name. Turn it so we can see some of their the chosen name on it. There's some interesting drawings. <laughs> and you use it to call, call the tribe meeting to order. And also, when we do our big campouts, we'll use it to call each tribe in a walk as we walk through the camping area to come to the council fire so we can have skits and sing songs. So each tribe will have its own personalized drum, yes, if you will, and the the adult is the caretaker of the drum. No, usually the kids are, and that's there's no beater for this drum because the children tend to go through them rather quickly. <laughs> they like <laughs> to beat them do. hard. 
Uh huh. Well, it's good for them, I suppose, to have a place where it's okay to make loud noises and, and run around. Yes. And the drum is used then throughout the, the year? Yes. Now, getting back to finances a, a little bit, we alluded to one of the, uh, the things that the Y is noted for, which is that no <coughs> child will be turned away for inability to pay. So where does the money come from? The, the Y is a large organization, and how do you operate? Yeah, the YMCA in Austin is over $7 million, and, and about nine years ago it was only $1 million. Uh, for the total budget. The Y gets income from three forms, uh, membership revenues, program revenues, and contributed income. Uh, that contributed income could be in the form of United Way dollars, but mainly it's our partner youth campaign. Um, membership pretty much takes care of membership, and program takes care of program as far as needs go. Uh, con the contributed income, the partner youth dollars, United Way dollars, and even dollars that we might get from grants help us pay for um, the our percentage of the population that can't afford to pay. And as long as we can keep those you know, contributions and that contributed income level high, we'll still have that policy where we won't turn away anyone for the inability to pay. So in general, how is the Y in Austin doing financially? We're, one of, we're probably one of the strongest YMCA's in the country. And what, we're very what, proud what do you that. suppose that is? Why Austin? Um, Austin had a, to be very honest, Austin started slow. I mean, the YMCA in a capital city that just began 45 years ago, um, we're catching up fast and furious with our first branch that opened in 91, our second branch that opened in 97, and our new East Communities branch, which is going to open up hopefully at the end of this year, and it'll give everybody in East Austin a great Christmas gift. And that's right on um, MLK and 183. Uh, it's a beautiful spot. Uh, land was donated from IBM, 125 acres. And I think we're going to have some great Indian Guides activities and, and organizations and outings out there. Wonderful. Maybe that's the way to grow, um, slow and steady and, and carefully. Mm -hmm. and, and all of us are members of, of local churches, so I wonder if you all could speak a little bit about the involvement of people in local churches. Um, is there a, a connection between a congregation and the Y, or is that something that we can really work in, in developing? Um, what's your observation, Kit? I don't really know. I don't. They're two totally different groups. I mean, they're two. You have okay. church and Sunday school and 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 uh, choir and things at church, but I don't know that. That goes into Indian Guides. Okay, so in, in your instance, um, your involvement with Indian Guides hasn't necessarily meant that people in your local church have said, yeah, we want to we support that ministry too, right? Yeah, there are between five and ten families I know of at our church that are very involved in Indian Guides, but I don't know that it overlaps it maybe you know by talking about it at church they hear about it maybe a good and way it's to another Christian outlet right maybe a good way to help the program grow and Tracy has your experience been similar that um, this is one part of your life and, and church is another or is there really a connection well there's a, there's a faith connection but not a not a connection between the wine and guides and the church scouting tends to have more uh, the scouting program has more of a connection you know, they actually use the church facilities and things, but the Indian Guides does not. Uh, but there is, uh, and typically, like on the on the campouts, uh, on Sunday morning we'll have a we'll have some type of a service. Uh, and it's our our tribe is not made up strictly of Christian. I mean, there's people of other fa of other of other uh, faiths mm -hmm. in our tribe. Sure, Austin is a diverse city, yeah. and. From from an executive, a paid staff uh, viewpoint, do you see then that the Y and and the churches do have connection, or again, is that something that that could really be developed? I think in every community, the Y is going to reflect what that community needs. Um, as I mentioned before, some are so interlinked that they're the same. Um, but here in Austin, we don't have those strong links. Uh, I mentioned character development. Uh, those five elements that we focus on are respect, responsibility, honesty, caring, and the fifth one is faith. And when we talk to the children about that and when we present that in our facilities, 
It's a faith of something that is greater. It's a faith that, it, for a child, it might be faith that their parents are going to come and pick them up. Mm -hmm. It's just that trust in the unknown that everything's going to be okay. Some people direct it towards a specific, uh, their specific religion or towards God. Um, but, uh, but it's fun to try to work with staff and children on that one particular character of faith. And one last question that we have time for, for for each of you. Since today is Father's Day, I wonder if you might reflect a little bit on, uh, in your two cases, what participation in, in the why has meant for your faith growth as a man and what you've seen in um, in your son, perhaps. So let me, let me start with you, Tracy. If you could say a little bit about how the why has influenced you spiritually. Sure, it, it's helped to fulfill I think my greatest responsibility is, is, you know, as a father, I think it was one of the callings. Of, I think it's very clear. And uh, it's helped, you know, through the involvement in the program, it's helped me fulfill that. And, and to help others, to, and through the outreach that, our, that the uh, Indian Guys does participate in. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what has your experience been, Kit? Um, showing my son that he can help others. I mean, he's, he gets into partners of youth. He raises lots of money and gets a real thrill out of being able to give to that fund every year. But also just teaching him that he can help others and showing what I want him to know from life. Mm -hmm. giving, giving him a base to, to go through life with on how to treat others. and. And as we all know, that's a, a basis of any of the world's faith, um, how you treat others. And, and how would you then answer that from your perspective, Paul? Uh, you know, watching the children and watching the adults and volunteer members and staff, um, you, you know that God has a purpose for everyone. And you watch the smiles and you see the sparkles in everyone's eyes. And if you think these two spark, sparkle and smile, you ought to see their kids when they're talking about it. And, um, and that you just know that you're, you're doing good, and you know the why's doing good, and you know the program's doing good. So it's, it's, it's great. So you might uh, send out a plea to all those men and others in families to come on down to the Y and yeah. get involved? join the smiles and enjoy the fun. And there are how many branches in Austin? I forget. There are three branches. The Town Lake Branch, which is downtown, Southwest Family Branch, and the North Park Family Branch. And then the newest branch, the East Communities Branch, December of this year. Great. Lots of places for folks to get involved and to call. We hope this program helps do it. Thank you so much Thank for you. being here, Paul and Tracy and, and Kit, for helping us celebrate Father's Day, Family Day, really. It's been good to have you here on Austin Faith Dialogue. We'll see you again next week.